this is Miss Clemmie and welcome to the podcast on eye physiology. It's the second of two podcasts on the eye. Now what we're looking at here is a simple color blindness test. And so if you can see greens and reds and oranges and such, you can depict that there is an eight embedded in that particular sequence of dots. And what's really doing the work for you there are the cones in your retina. And the cones allow us to see color. So what we're going to do in this video is take a look at how the cones actually do see color. What activates them to send that message to your brain? And how does your brain do that interpretation? But first I want to deal with something a little more simple and perhaps more well known. And that's the fact that your lens does a lot of crazy flips to the images that we see. So for example, this letter K actually goes through and ends up on this part. So it gets flipped and reversed. And the reason being is because the lens has those different refractive indices that bend that image in a certain way. But essentially though, um, that helps us to have a larger peripheral vision. It helps us to see objects a little bit larger too. So even though it seems kind of confusing, it does work out in the long run. And so that, that image that, that is depicted on the retina and the retina sends it to your brain, your brain ends up reversing the image and making you see it upright as it really is. Um, and that's pretty amazing feat. Um, in fact, newborns, their vision immediately after they're born actually is flipped. They can't actually, they, they don't have any practice. Their brain doesn't have any practice flipping those images. So it takes a little bit for newborns to see images the right way. And in a study done with adults, it was found that if you flip, put some goggles on or glasses on them that flip the image, after a couple of days, their brain actually does adjust to that change. So your eye does all the mechanical things, but the brain is pretty amazing. It does all the interpreting of those images. But then let's go back to the rods and cones that I, I, I mentioned earlier. So I just mentioned cone, and this is a photoreceptor in your retina. So you can see where, where the back of the eyeball is zoomed in. And there are a couple different types of cones. There's red, there's blue, and there's green. So each of those clearly sees or gets excited by a different wavelength of light to help see those particular colors. So cone photoreceptors are really work really well in bright light, which is why we don't see colors very clear at night. Now, if we look at this image of the eyeball, here's our lens and our image going straight through. At this region called the fovea is where the cones are most highly concentrated. Now, we don't have nearly as many cones as we do rods. So rods, on the other hand, here, rods help us to see in the dark. So they help us to see like black and white and gray. Rods are highly concentrated everywhere else in the periphery of the retina. And we have a lot more rods, like I mentioned. Okay, so rods and cones are two different types of photoreceptors in the retina. Now let's look at one more step. How do these rods and cones actually create electrical impulses that get sent to your brain? Well, it all is done by the work of rhodopsin. Rhodopsin is a protein that's made of, let's see, opsin plus another one, another protein called retinol. The reason I tell you this is because you hear before people always say, well, eat your carrots, they have vitamin A, it'll help you see better. That's because vitamin A has retinol in it. So your body uses that to, to make rhodopsin. Anyways, let's orient yourself to this picture down here first. So we have rods and we have cones, and then this is like our basement here of the retina, the very bottom layer. All of this stuff as well is, is part of the rod and cone too. So there's a lot of stuff on the very top that are important. So let's zoom in on just one of those over here. So we're going to zoom in on the rod cell. At the very top are these discs, and that's where rhodopsin lies. So when the light wave strikes here, the right wavelength, it activates rhodopsin. It excites it, so it changes its conformation slightly. And that conformation change then has a series of events, the domino effect of events, that causes the permeability of this membrane to change. So perhaps maybe sodium starts going in, potassium might go out, calcium at the synapse may rush in, and any of them, what happens? Is we create an action potential. So that change in shape from rhodopsin due to the light 
changes the permeability in the membrane, which creates our action potential and can be sent to the brain. So that's a closer look at how our eye actually works to give those images to the occipital lobe. And I hope you found that helpful.